Prosecution hasn't worked too well for us because sometimes <laughs> the courts haven't actually taken the whole issue as serious as we'd like. We try to have discussions with them. I mean, even if we make cash port operators, they say, because the uh, big crimes, that's why the investigation from the enforcement division mm -hmm. try to follow the money because the little man or the little lady you see selling the cash port by the roadside, mm -hmm. that's not really the big fish and whatever. And if you were to arrest them and then you take them before the courts, Again, whether it's culturally or whatever, the judge will say, well, this little lady, five children or whatever, what, would, mm. what am I going to charge her? Both you and Richard opened the point about um, the, culture, the, the, the cultural practices that we have, which I think sort of give rise to the question of unregulated gambling and the extent to which that is predominant or prevalent in the country. Can you give us an estimate, for example, as to the nature of that, uh, the size of that kind of Mind. I mean, in our in our estimation, we believe that the whole illegal gambling has actually reduced significantly with the advent of the online gaming, with the number of the increase in the lottery operators that we have right now, and the easy access that uh, the punters have to two operators to actually place their bets and whatever. Three operators. Three operators, yeah, the additional two, three operators. And uh, what we're seeing now there, because we have an enforcement division that actually specifically look and to actually address the whole issue of illegal gambling. And uh, that has reduced significantly, and we believe that that is because of the easy access that people have. And then what happened in the past, we found out that whatever odds that will be given by the illegal operator. I mean, the competition that's actually in place now, particularly the lottery operators, because it was mainly the cash pot that, that you had a lot of the illegal operators in Japan. So the competition has actually meant that the odds that's been offered by the operators are now more in line with what was being offered by the illegal operator. So with the greater control that they have with the legal operator, and also, I must say, the kind of uh, integrity that the Commission has actually brought to the whole sector in terms of knowing that there's a place where people can come back and report if they have complaints or whatever, and they know that would be addressed, and the kind of uh, presence we've had out there in terms of visibility and how we try to actually be integrity. So give us some sector. comparative data now. What yeah, was it yeah. maybe five years ago or so? I mean, it's for us to see the, the it's significant an, reduction, as you call it. It's an area that we would have actually liked, and it's, so we were pr planning to actually undertake some form of studies. Any figure we would actually put out, there would be a guesstimate. We know that it was large, but we have no idea that what it was. Like. <laughs> On the other side, in other words, how much revenue is being made? How much are you not able to get in? We because of these. We haven't been days. able to do that, but what we can tell is that with the advent of the additional tool operators, revenues from that side have improved significantly. I mean, this year was the first time that even Supreme Ventures would have said that they would actually top a uh, billion dollars in terms of profits from their side. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I mentioned uh, to you in terms of the increase that this year, in the 2021-22, we had uh, over $197 billion in sales. And that's over a 40% increase from the previous year. So that from the side that we can right. adequately calculate and we have data, we can give you a figure, but to actually give you a figure, I mean, at one time, it was common to say that we believe that the legal operators were maybe twice the size of the legal operators. I mean, but again, that's all anecdotal. That is all coming from guesstimation. We have no figures and we haven't had any research now to actually justify But you know it has significantly reduced. Well, we know it has reduced, and uh, what we feel that compensates for that is that we've seen the rise in the legal, in the legal numbers from what we're getting now. So there's so, hope for so, hope. So when is the <laughs> research coming for that? Uh, we are, I mean, we want to do uh, research on the entire industry in terms of what is happening out there. And uh, we've started with the, this particular one. We're going to update the research. We have another one coming in. But I mean, we do have in the pipeline. Uh, finance have been actually agreed to actually do market research as well exactly how the market, the size of the market, what is happening out mm -hmm. in the market and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. we haven't done that yet. You, you, you mentioned your 
um, enforcers and so on. I could tell you the childhood stories of the enforcers who would go around for, for the, to the pick up your shops and so on. Mm. Um, but there, there are still the cop fights. There are still um, the mahjong camps. Big gambling going down, and you don't know about it. Well, I mean, that's it. If we don't know about it, there's little we can do. We are certainly relying on our investigators to go out there. And what we also hope is that whether it's from the public, whether it's the operators who are operating legally to actually point us to those things so we can actually get to, to go there. Because obviously I can't tell you that we have the resources to be everywhere that mm -hmm. illegal gambling is taking place. But wherever we know it's happening, that's what that particular department is in to do. What is the cost of one machine? What machine can cost you near to three to four hundred thousand dollars? Three to four hundred thousand dollars. No, up to five hundred. Up to five. Up to five hundred. Yeah, what is the cost of registering the machine? Five thousand dollars. So it, it really makes no sense then to to purchase a machine and then have it have it seized. Because even if it is, well, that is that's their decision that they make. But the thing about it is, it doesn't make sense to us either. But when it is, when we seize it, then. Once we actually find that, that you had it illegal, we will destroy because we'll go for forfeiture and then we'll destroy it. So mm -hmm. as you say, I don't know what would be the rationale to actually purchase a machine for $500,000, $5,000 to register it, and you don't take that, 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 that. What, is it, what is the fine? What fine? If, no, no, I'm saying if they come back, they'll be, if you say that if they, they'll be prosecuted. Yeah. I'm just trying to get an idea as, uh, as to the fine for prosecuting. The fine prosecution hasn't worked too well for us because sometimes <laughs> the courts haven't actually taken the whole issue as serious as we would like. We try to have discussions with them. I mean, even if we make mm -hmm. cash port operators, they say, because the big crimes, that's why the investigation from the enforcement division mm -hmm. try to follow the money because the little man or the little lady mm -hmm. you see selling the cash port by the roadside. Mm -hmm. That's not really the big fish and whatever. And if you were to arrest them and then you take them before the courts, again, whether it's culturally or whatever, the judge will say, well, this is a lady, five children or whatever. What, would, mm. what am I going to charge her? Or so, I mean, the sentence is really minuscule in that respect. So, I mean, that is part of the problem that we face. So we try to bypass this little person selling and try and do the investigation, the undercover work. To get to the big fish in terms of who's asking. Have you found a big what? fish? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, it's in three hand chunk. A long time, long time now because it is, uh, we are very sophisticated, put it that way. And, and sometimes when we know that we or we think we've actually found them and we're about to move in, sometimes information leaks out and then they ask them.